Uh, our next guest is the most qualified to talk about this, and that, of course, is the great Baldy. Yeah, 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 Baldy, Baldy. Oh, he likes pizza and football. Oh, Baldy. That's <laughs> it. The great, the one, the only Baldy. What do you say, my brother? Hey, cuz, uh, things are good here, man. Ready for a, a, a good week and going to visit uh, three different camps here this week. So, uh, going to wind up this sort of second phase of the offseason uh, visiting some teams. Who you got? You got the Jets, the got the Jets tomorrow, Giants on Wednesday, and Ravens on uh, Thursday. And I'm I'm excited about seeing all of them, but I do want to see what Derrick Henry looks like in that Raven offense. That I know I'm fascinated like. by that. That's that's going to be really interesting to see how he looks in that offense. Yeah, well, I mean, the offense line in Tennessee was terrible last year. The year before, uh, when the offense line was a little bit better, a little healthier, I mean, he did run for over 1,500 yards. I, I don't believe that he's fallen off that much. He just didn't get any runways last year. And if you're trying to stop both Lamar and Derrick Henry in a run-based offense with all of the misdirection and all the eye candy they throw at you, like I think I think you might have some success. Yeah, I I, I think I kind of feel the same way uh, that he's going to have some sort of bounce back. You're also with Washington, right? Like, which is really interesting. That you got up and close with with Jaden Daniels, yeah, it was it was really a, a great day because uh, I went, you know, Dan Quinn came up and, you know, um, you know, I had about 15, 20 minutes. I was the only guy there for the media, so he invited me down. So um, he wanted me, he wanted his, my impressions of practice. A couple of things: one, you can't find anybody, and this, you know, I, I understand, you know, you got a new quarterback, he's the star, you know, all face the, all that stuff. You can't find one person in that organization that hasn't been impressed by everything he's done so far, whether it's understanding and learning the offense, whether it's taking charge, leadership, um, blending in. Like, he's just off to a good start. Now, it's it's offseason. You know, I don't get that. But, he, you know, like the final two-minute drill, the ball didn't hit the ground. He looked good. Um, I thought he got better as the day went on. And then the other thing that was really interesting to me because every team is doing this differently, is they spent 20 minutes on the new kickoff. Mm. And so wow. they're trying a lot of different kicks, type of kicks, okay? Um, because really, nobody can move until the ball's touch. So right. the guys that can pooch it, put it up in the air, that, that, that doesn't do you any good. Nobody can move, whether it's the return team or the coverage team, until the ball is touched. So then it's like, okay, you give them a knuckleball where they – they might have a hard time handling it. And then the other thing is, because it's going to look more like a run play than it is a return. So now Austin Eckler's returning kicks and Brian Robinson's returning kicks. And now you're looking at guys that can read, you know, they can literally look for six inches of daylight. And so, like, that whole thing is kind of fascinating now. Um, you know, Dave Toby, Kansas City, said, look, there's going to be 1,600 more plays this year than there was last year. We're not going to get – now – this is a Which I think is brilliant, by the way, Baldy. I, I well, love this because yeah. you, you took a non, like you said, sixteen hundred new plays. You took a non-play, and all of a yeah. sudden you made it interesting. So two things: one, it's a one-year trial. So it's you know I was talking to a guy that worked in the officials booth last year on how they might officiate this because you simply don't have enough eyes to make sure nobody moves, nobody leaves before the ball is touched. Like there's a lot of they're still playing around with how to disseminate the seven officials. And then, like, look, if there's 50 injuries on this thing, it'll, it'll go away. If there's 50 touchdowns scored, it'll go away. So, like, they're just going to monitor it. But I think, you know, instead of just getting up and going to get yourself a beer and knowing that there's going to be a commercial whatever, like, it's going to keep you in your seat, especially because I was I was talking to Austin Eckler about it. I saw him split one the other day. And to me, it looked like an inside trap. And that's kind of how it was blocked. And he hit it wow. right in front of me. And so I'm curious what the Eagles will do. Like all the other guys, Britton Covey, all these guys they have, like maybe it's, I'm not saying they would put Saquon back there, 
but maybe it's it's a running back position right now. Like nobody really knows exactly, but it's interesting to watch how every team is handling it. Yeah, I, I, I'm fascinated by that. I, and here's the the only thing about uh, from an Eagle standpoint, Washington looks like they're going to be better. Like Washington yeah. looks, and certainly, obviously, he's a rookie, so this year they're still building it. But they look like they finally got it right, at least trajectory going forward. Well, I think one thing, like they have, a, you know, the way, the way the Eagles have and the way the good teams have. Like their coach, Dan Quinn, and Adam Peters, the general manager, they're they're joined at the hip. They're, they're seeing it the same way. So, like, you got to have that. you got to have that cohesiveness. They're going to be better. Um, just to, I, I told Dan just at the practice, like the tempo, how they practice. They did score 31 points in each game against the Eagles last year, and it's last year. But, you know, they – you know, Terry McLaurin, you know, Dotson, like they've got Austin Eckler now with Robinson. The offense line, they got Tyler Biotic from Dallas to play center. They didn't have a center. Like they're going to be better. Bobby Wagner, Frankie Luvu, like some of these guys, Jeremy Chin, like some some of these names have been really productive players in this league. Now, can, and I talked to Dan Quinn, like, you know, the one thing about DQ, you can say what he, you know, he went to a Super Bowl in Atlanta. Matt Ryan was the MVP. You know, Kyle Shanahan ran the offense. They led the league in Dallas, Gus, over three years. They had the most takeaways in this league, three years in a row. So I was just asking him about that, like what is it about it? So he had some interesting things to say. They're they're going to be better. They're just they're going to they're going to be they're going to have a better plan than we had. I think Cliff Kingsbury is a good coordinator. Now look, he had Kyler Murray in the Pro Bowl. He coached Patrick Mahomes. He coached Baker. Like you know, he's got a you know even. Johnny Manziel back in his days at Texas A&M. Like, the guy's got a track record of quarterbacks now. Caleb Williams. Like, Jaden Daniels is his guy right now. I'm, I'm anxious to see how this thing kind of comes together. Yeah, I am too. I, I, I kind of look at it, and, and I, I loved it. I loved him in the LSU. Uh, it was print with terrific thrower. One thing but the only thing you're worried about is a one thing about team. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. So I was talking to Cliff. Kingsbury about him and he said like between his the the second first year at LSU and his second year at LSU he went with these reality goggles where you get to see defenses and coverages and blitzes into a screen and you adjust to it and what he does is he dials it up as fast as it can go so he's got to process quicker and he said it was probably the biggest reason why he made that jump between his first year at LSU wow. and winning a Heisman Trophy. And now Cliff and I'm like, Cliff, is this a gimmick? Like, I, I hear about this. He goes, Baldwin, I'm just telling you. Like, his ability to recognize coverages right now, to adjust uh, protections for those coverages, for blitz looks, like he's doing this mentally without ever getting on the field. And it looks like it's transferring. Now, maybe it's just in that gimmick category. Maybe it's just, okay, offseason – stuff that teams play with. But Jaden really believes that it was a big difference for him making that jump at LSU. Dude, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm a huge believer in this stuff. So okay. my, I, I, there's a, in baseball, there's this VR hitting tool, right? Okay. Where you can actually, you'll, you'll see real pitching and it looks like real pitching at you and you'll hit off pitchers and, like MLB, you, you can. Yeah. It helps kids. I've no, I've seen it. It helps them with their with their hand eye, man. It's a big deal, and that makes sense. It's a video game generation, right? So, yep. how better to teach them coverages, what you're seeing on defense, than through a, a, a virtual reality screen? They're used well, to learning off a screen. No doubt. No doubt. And so, um, but the, in addition, like, okay, you go, okay, let's do some VR. Let's do film study. Let's go on the practice field. And let's just, like, keep working it. Let's just keep working uh, and, and all these different ways. Like, I don't think anything replaces being out there on Sundays, live action, live right. field. But if you can prepare in a way that you can, what you see is what you believe and what you believe is how you have to react. If you can see it quicker, it's going to make you better. Yeah, because it's training your mind to process. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Like in baseball, right? 
obviously nothing's going to take the take take it over live hitting, right? Nothing's going to take the yeah. place of that. But if you could if you could teach your mind reaction time, right? How to process what am I looking at? Am I looking at a slider, a fastball, a four seamer, a two seamer? And it's the yep. same thing in football. Like when you're looking at stuff, it's about processing quickly. So all you're doing is mind training your mind to process the stuff. I think it's fascinating, man. I do too. I do too. And it's just something to kind of like watch. But I think anything that speeds up your twitch, yeah, speeds up that whole um you know, that whole thing that has to go off in your brain. Some guys never see it, and that's why they ne they're they never successful. Um, you know, and then you could have 20 years of experience like Aaron Rodgers, and it's going to be hard to fool him. Right. But, like, if you're starting at square one and you're the you're the guy, like, why wouldn't you play around with it? Like, why wouldn't you employ that and use it? Like, it can't hurt at this point. And, and, and for a kid to say, and I'm calling Jaden the kid, but, like, like, the guy was the best player in college football for a reason. Like it was ridiculous what he did last year. And so it's more than just talent. And I don't know, it's just something that I'm going to kind of monitor as the season goes on when I get a chance to, you know, sit down and talk to him down the road. Uh, all right. I, I got to ask you this stuff because it cropped up at Eagles mini camp. Jalen spoke to the media. He was talking, he was asked about uh, Sirianni's and his role in the offense. So obviously it's Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore's offense. So, and Sirianni's taking more of an overseer kind of role. And Jalen answered the question very oddly. It was like, well, I don't know how to answer it. It was a softball question where all you got to do is say, hey, you know, Nick's uh, he's going to be working with it and you know him and he'll do whatever he can to help out and whatever. But he didn't. And it was, it kind of brings into this weird kind of relationship between Nick and Jalen. And, uh, you know, he's been asked a couple times to have his back, and he kind of doesn't do it. Now, partly people say it's could be uh, Jalen's personality. is a little different, a little bit more guarded. But this seems weird, and we know the relationship, especially between an offensive coach and his quarterback. Well, it you know, you it has to be seamless. They have to be looking at the same thing. Now, it could be, you know, they, they came out and said that the offense is, you know, 95% new, which is great. The offense stunk last year in the second half of the season. I'm glad it's new. I'm glad, you know, Kellen Moore, Doug Nussmeyer, and these guys are there. Um, they've had success. Uh, I, I mean, I, I know it was awkward and all that. Um, you kind of – you kind of don't want to hear that, and, I, and that's what makes Eagle fans bristle here. But Jalen is very guarded uh, to begin with. Like, he is a natural leader. He has to play better, period. He has to see things like I just watched him in a red zone period the other day. He still looks hesitant to pull the trigger. Like, you could have – like, it's just a seven-on-seven, seven, you know, red zone. Like, I see Saquon coming out of the backfield in, in a, you know, a flat route, and I'm like – just throw it to Saquon like he's open. Like, just give it to him. And he never gave it to him. And he was holding it. And I've seen him in scrimmages against Miami, you know, whether it was last year or the year before. And, he like, he gets hesitant. Like, I don't know what that is. It's just a drill. It's not game. Um, he, he's got to play better, uh, period. And so if he's taking his instruction from Kellen, all right, take it from Kellen. Let Nick run the team. But you would like to see, especially now with all the changes that they made. And and look, I give Howie a ton of credit. I've, I've been critical of Howie on some things. But like the stink that that team had. And I was just went back and watched week 18 against the Giants, cuz. It's 24-0 in the second quarter. Giants. Yeah. And they, st like this thing was awful. And they have Howie come in and basically just rip this, this defense apart throw a bunch of money at some of the stars. Like, how we – like, if you're Jalen, you can't ask for anything more from a general manager than what he did. Like, nobody could ask for more. You know, whether it's re-signing guy, signing Jalen last year, like putting a new defense out there, new coordinators. Like, it's on Jalen right now. It's on Jalen to go out there and ball out and earn the money and get this team into the playoffs and then, you know, playoffs to the playoffs. But, like, he's – you just like at this time of the year to like, man, this is this is an awesome start to a new beginning. 
because that's what it is. All right, uh, I, I, because I'm with you. What, what's she, and this, by the way, this portion of the show, the meat locker, right? It's Baldy, brought to you by Butcher Box. Let, let me ask you a question. What Sirianni is entering such a difficult year, right? First of all, if they don't win, he's gone. Everybody knows that. And then you have this new offensive coordinator. So if the offense has success, people here are bringing it up. What, you know, Kellen Moore is going to get all the love for the off, the new offensive success. So Nick's in an odd spot. And w- the second part of the question is, w- what do you think of Syria? Who is Nick Sirianni? Well, I mean, first of all, I think you're, I don't believe, I mean, I don't agree with your assessment. Like, you got to think about this, cuz. He took over a terrible 4-11-1 team and had him in the playoffs the next year. The next year, they start off 8-0, and, and they're within 30 minutes of winning a Super Bowl. Last year, they start off 10-1, and one, and they're ripping every team in this league apart, and then it collapsed. So it's, you know, the guy, for whatever you want to say about him, like this guy is got this team on track, all right? Now, the last seven weeks were, were ugly, uh, and I agree. But I don't know if that pushes you out the door if Kellen Moore has great success with the offense. Like I, I don't believe. No, but unless, my, no, my assessment is if they don't win, they don't have a good year. Yeah, he's well, gone. That, that, that's the case. You know, um, you know, there, it might all be gone. It might be time. Like we, we saw it go bad, right? Real quick, with Peterson, and they had a, they blew it up. So it went bad with Chip Kelly, and they blew it up. So that it does. If it does go bad, like you're describing, and I don't know exactly what that is, but certainly if they don't make the playoffs, then I would think everybody. You know, because it's a good roster. It's They've got a – I mean, you know, you just go through the talent that's there. It's good. Now, these young kids on the defense line, they have to develop. You know, um, they Vic's got to make this thing a whole lot more cohesive than it ever was last year. So all those things have to take place. But, yeah, I would agree that if they don't make the playoffs and they're just muddling in the NFC East at 9-8 and eight or maybe 10-7, and seven, like, yeah, they, they, they might do what they did to Doug. Yeah, and I guess but I guess my only point in, in the assessment is that he's in a difficult spot, right? So if the offense performs well, my only point is that Kellen Moore will get all the accolades. It won't be like, hey, great job, Nick, right? Even though he's an offensive guy and he oversaw it, Kellen Moore is going to get all the flowers is my only point. So he's – and I like Sirianni, so you you know that. You and I both kind of we, – we both like him, but – He's in a tough, he's in a tough spot, you know, no matter what happens. He's just in yeah. a difficult spot. Yeah, but I think coaches kind of embrace that because yeah. like I'm not saying like I don't think anybody should ever have it easy. Like Kyle Shanahan hasn't won a Super Bowl, but he's been to a bunch of them. He's on the doorstep, you know, in a couple different places, and people want to hold that above his head. Like you could say he's in a tough spot. He's got to win one. They've got a, an elite roster. He's got to win one, but I, I mean, you just keep like, I remember, you know, Andy Reid went through this in Philly cause he goes to five NFC championship games. Like he's in, he was in a tough spot, but some coaches just embrace it. Yeah, Nick is the only thing Nick knows is coaching. He doesn't know anything else. His father's a coach. His brothers are coaches. He's a coach. That's all he knows. And so, you know, Sean McDermott's in a tough spot, like tough spots are part of the business. And yeah. I, think he, I think he's going to embrace that kind of a spot, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting. Hey, last thing I, I want to throw at you, because uh, it was sort of me. And it's a, it's a tough question. I kind of straddle the fence here a little bit. I'm curious what you have to say. Jordan Love or Jalen Hurts, you can have either one for the remainder of their career. Now, obviously – Jordan Love was spectacular last half of the year. You and I broke down the film. He was amazing. He had an incredible run. He, two years ago, we saw the best of Jalen. In that, in that Super Bowl, he was incandescent. So I'll, I'll ask you. You have the choice. Who you got? Well, they're totally different players. Like, yeah. I want my quarterback to beat defenses from the pocket. Yeah. And that's what Jordan Love does. Jalen can do that, but he prefers to run a lot. 
and it has gotten them hurt three years in a row. And so um, I think for longevity, what we saw from Jordan Love with a cast around him that doesn't come close to what Philly is paying their guys, A.J., Devontae, Dallas, like it doesn't come close to it. And to see him put up, you know, 4,100-plus yards in his first year of starting, Jalen's never done that. So I'm not saying Jalen can't play on that level from the pocket, but I want my quarterback to be able to do that from the pocket. And Jordan Love right now is ahead of Jalen in that department. Yeah, I mean, he throws a beautiful ball, too. Like, he just – Beautiful oof. ball. Yeah. I remember talking his, – you know, his college coach was Matt Wells at Utah State. And Matt Wells went from Utah State to Texas Tech. And so I went – I was doing a game at Texas Tech when Matt Wells first got there. And I remember asking him about Jordan. And and I stayed in touch with him about him. And the next year, Jordan came out. And I said, do you think – you think he can do this? He's drafted in the first round. He goes, he absolutely can do it. The talent is there, but he needs he needs time to sit. He's not ready right now, and he just went to the perfect spot. And the coach, the organization stayed with them. They they made the switch at the right time. They did everything right. Transition, and now I think this kid is ready to really take off. Yeah, I do too. Great, listen, great stuff, brother. Always the way you break yeah. it down. The best, man. I, I'm looking forward to your uh, reports from all three of these camps this week. This is good stuff. I, I tell you, cuz I I mean I don't need to do that. I went down to Washington. So, you know, it's an eight hour round trip. I love doing it. I love seeing the guys with my eyeballs. Like I, I, I know there's reports coming out from all of these. Like I just like to see it myself. And I like to meet the new guys. Like I, I know Jeremy Chin. You know, he's a old, you know, a veteran guy in a new place. Like I just like watching these guys in new places and, and seeing for myself and seeing what they're getting out of practice and just like the kickoff thing. Like I get so much out of these visits. Yeah. And, and that's why you, you often say this, you're like, I don't listen to any other analyst. I, I just want to do my own work. So whether yeah. it's breaking down film or taking these visits. Uh, and by the way, I, I think it was smart of Washington and Dan Quinn to pick your brain a little bit. Yeah, I think a lot more teams should do that. Yeah. Well, thank you. But I mean, it was just, it was just a good, it's good to see, you know, to see Cliff. Joe Witt's been a good coordinator in Dallas. Yeah. I think, you know, he's run the defense now in Washington. So I think that, you know, for the first time, I feel like this is, this is a good change in Washington. I think this thing has a chance to kind of take off. Good stuff. Ball. Yeah. Okay, a great yeah. ball. Day. Thanks, All right, brother. I'll talk to you later in the week, man. Sounds good, baby. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> 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 like the mayor.